Okay guys, welcome to today's video. We're going to be working on a 2003 to 2004 GM instrument cluster. Uh, this one was sent to me as a prior repair attempt. They tried to replace the speedometer because their speedometer was not working, I believe. Uh, I would assume their tachometer also was not working for them, but uh, yeah, speedometer wasn't working, so they, they tried to replace it. They lifted a solder pad, they tried to add a uh, jumper, and they lifted a test point, so they decided, eh, time to stop. I'm going to send this to somebody else. Um, so yeah, Got a new X27 stepper motor on there, did the normal rebuild, replaced all the bulbs, replaced all the stepper motors, and I added the jumper to repair it, which I had to go to the VIA since they had lifted the test point. Um, so ran the jumper and still didn't have any speedometer or tack. Um, so I decided next logical step, just really quick, easy one to do because I have a bunch of them, replace the stepper driver just because I had them, and it's really quick to do. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of just part swapping to test stuff, but uh, I just was like, eh, let me just swap it out because I got a ton of them. Um, swapped it out, still having the exact same problem. So uh, I've diagnosed and fixed the speedometer already. Let's go ahead and do the tachometer to do the video because normally these weird one-off problems, I don't do videos on, uh, but since we had dual of the problem, I can actually diagnose. I don't like faking uh, videos and, you know, being like, oh, I already found the problem. Let me just reset the problem again and do the video on it. Um, so that <laughs> that's, uh, and, and it's really lengthy sometimes to diagnose these things. So uh, I spent mm, probably about an hour uh, wor working on this before doing the video. That That's counting the full rebuild on it. But yeah, pro I, I probably spent about an hour on it and then found the problem with the speedometer so now let's do the tachometer together that way you guys can can learn learn with me so let's uh let's let's get right into this and get this done all right so let's first just look at the one that's not working um we have uh just a couple of needles put on here ignore this mess of wires uh, it's the we got the signal generator coming in here and we got the oscilloscope probe over here so we got a couple of grounds going uh, but yeah let's turn this thing on and just take a look at it uh, see what it's doing so as you see the tachometer is twitching um, and it's not showing what it's supposed to and yeah this plugs bad so it flips on and off um, so the tack signal comes in here we can All right, so we can see the tachometer signal going there. Uh, we're, we have the 39 hertz, which is what I have my signal generator set to. Um, and then the trace comes down and you have a uh, signal there. Uh, and then next to no signal at all here, we have uh, you know 1.4 volts. It spikes up, uh, and you'll see when it spikes, you get a twitch on the um, tachometer. So let's take a look at a board that's working properly and actually see what it's supposed to be doing. So we'll take this one off. Let's move it out of the way. All right, so you can see tachometer is working properly on here. Set it back down to the 39. All right. Um, so here we have signal uh, and it, it's got the uh, uh, nine volts peak to peak because the signal generator I'm using set to nine volts. Um, see if we can keep this thing turned on. That plug's going bad. So then uh, you know, nine volts peak to peak here again, and then we have five volts uh, peak to peak. So, the, and this is the properly working one. So we know our issue is on this side of the resistor with the other one. Sorry, this this board's pretty corroded, so it's uh, hard to get a good good probe on there with the oscilloscope. But there you go. So we have a little bit of a curve to it. Um, uh, probably from the capacitor there. So uh, I think that should give us a good hint of what we should be looking at. We're probably looking at a uh, bad capacitor. So let's try taking the capacitor off the other board and uh, see what we ha have going on there. All right, so we're just gonna flick this little puppy off of here and uh, see see what happens. Get a little leaded solder in there to help take that off. All 
All right. There goes the capacitor. Uh, that's gone forever, so hopefully it's not a good one. <laughs> And let's turn that on. Oh, and we already can see that it is working because it, it moved and it's not. So there we go. We have a very square square wave um, and we we have uh, five volts peak to peak. Uh, so yeah, uh, it does appear to be working. Let's just uh, adjust that. Yep. So uh, we had a shorted capacitor because uh, on the other side of that's ground. Um, so we, we know what our problem is. Let's uh, get a donor board and pull a new capacitor off of it. I actually need to take uh, this one off too. This one's for the speedometer. Uh, same issue. Uh, that, that, that one was doing the same thing. Uh, a little bit of heat brought back the that capacitor back to life, but I don't trust it <laughs> to to stay on there. Uh, so sometimes if you get a capacitor hot, uh, one one of these, it'll work for a little while. Uh, I'm, I I have no clue why what what causes that. Um, maybe it's the uh, electrolyte and it spreads out. I have no clue. I'd be just guessing on why it will short term fix a capacitor, but. Um, yeah, definitely replacing both of those. Uh, you could probably get away with leaving it off. Uh, it's uh, most likely just a decoupling capacitor, but I don't know exactly what its purpose was there. So uh, I'm just going to replace it off of a, a donor board instead of leaving it on there. So let me grab this donor board from over here. We'll just pull those two capacitors off of it. And we'll switch the camera view. Okay, so done with the oscilloscope now. now. Let's get those two capacitors off of this one. All right, I got my capacitors. Bring the board back over here. I'm gonna use hot air to turn put those on. All right. Now we've uh, replaced both those capacitors. So I'm gonna zoom in real quick just so you can see where we were working again. Get a better view of that. So uh, yeah, it was, uh, these two capacitors are just replaced. This top one is for the tachometer, and this middle one here is the speedometer. Because uh, uh, I was originally having issues. Oh, I was having issues with both. Uh, I was able to diagnose the speedometer um, and was like, well, I'm going to guess that the tachometer is the same one. So let me do a video on this. Normally, I don't do videos on these, uh, you know, one off and weird uh, problems uh, just because I main reason is I don't think they're going to be too useful for other people because this isn't a common problem. I don't see it very often. Um, this is the first time I've personally seen this problem on one of these. Uh, however, I saw somebody post on the Facebook group having this problem the other day, so um, I figured I'd share it. Uh, this could quite possibly be his board that he was working on. Um, I, I don't know. The customer had sent it to me as a prior repair attempt, so... Um, let's just uh, hook this up again and just double check that it's working now that we've replaced those capacitors uh, and just check both of them. 
So I'll give that power. I'll zoom this back out so y'all can see. All right. So yep, we now have a working tack on here and double check that Speedo is still working. Yep, and the Speedo is working. So yeah, that was a successful repair there. Uh, we just replaced the two capacitors. Um, note on replacing capacitors from donor boards. Uh, these ceramic capacitors, uh, I'm okay with replacing them from a uh, donor board because uh, the values aren't written on them. So I can't just go, oh, I know the value of this capacitor. Let me just go order a new one. Um, and they really don't wear out quite as bad with age as uh, electrolytic capacitors. I would not take electrolytic capacitors off of donor boards. I'd say that is a, uh, a bad practice just because they have pretty limited hours on them in the first place. They're kind of have the lifespan of a light bulb normally. Um, they, they are rated in the couple of thousands of hours on them, uh, which is similar to the bulbs. They, these bulbs that I'm using actually are rated for like 50,000 hours. Uh, I, I assumed that the rating on there was a typo, but I don't know. Um, they, they do last a while. Uh, they're, they're JKL brand, if, if anyone's curious. Um, but yeah, so pretty, pretty uh, simple looking repair in this. Uh, I, I made it look easy because I'd already diagnosed the uh, speedometer. So, uh, and, and I knew, I'd known these from past experiences. Their uh, correct solder joints on those will make these not work, uh, which is why most guys reflow uh, those two resistors. Um, it's for your tachometer and speedometer. Uh, and then I was just able to probe it out to find the other ones. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully you guys found this useful uh, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.